Uh, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Kim Murray. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And again, my name is Qin Shu. Today, I'll be talking about a project that we monitor the spread of tomato spotted will or so tosco virus in field resistant cultivars and also investigated yield reduction in relation to virus spread and disease severity. So spotted wool disease of peanut is a major constraint of peanut production in the US. The disease was first reported in the US in 1971 in Texas and soon became, uh, became ubiqu ubiquitous across major peanut producing states. It cost over $20 million loss annually in Georgia alone and the loss to the disease have been increasing, um, have been increasing in the recent years. So the symptoms of spotty wool disease on peanut include concentric ring spots and chlorosis on leaflets, uh, stunting of the above ground plant parts, small and irregular shape of pots and kernels and reddish seed coats. Tomato spotted weld or Sotospo virus TSWV is the causative agent of the spotted weld disease in peanut. TSWV has a wide host range and TSWV is exclusively, exclusively transmitted by only nine species of thrips in the family Thripidae. Tobacco thrips Franculina fusca is the predominant vector species of, of TSWV in peanut in the Southeast United States. Um, thrips transmit uh, TSWV through feeding. Only adult thrips that acquire TSWV in their first and early um, second instar larval stages can transmit the virus. Once acquired, thrips can transmit TSWV throughout their lives with the virus replicating in their bodies. Adults with higher mobility as compared to the larvae are the major transmitters. So I, as I mentioned earlier, we have observed TSWV incidence and associated yield loss in an upward trend, even when resistant cultivars are largely used in recent years. Season-long TSWV spread has been observed, but the virus spread in resistant cultivars that are currently, currently used has not been fully understood or characterized. When it comes to spread, TSWV infection can come from primary spread when variliferous thrips immigrating to peanut fields, or from secondary spread when infield thrips population transmit TSWV from plant to plant in the field. So one important thing that's not completely understood is the relevance of pr primary and secondary spread of TSWV to peanut yield loss in those resistant cultivars. So the objectives of the study was to characterized the temporal and spatial spread of TSWV in two runner type resistant cultivars in order to make inferences on the relative importance of primary and secondary spread of TSWV. And also to quantify peanut yield loss to TSWV in plants infected in early or mid to late season with varying disease severity. So the experiment was conducted in 2019 and 2020 at UGA Research Farms uh, in Georgia. We planted peanut in early planting window, trying to increase the possibility of high TSWV pressure as we relied on the natural occurrence of TSWV incidence. Two runner type uh, cultivars, Georgia O6G and Georgia Green were used. And the experiment was a randomized complete block design with four replications. So starting from 35 days after planting, we went into the field and flagged every single TSWV symptomatic plants we found. We did this every other week up to 119 days after planting, which was about three weeks before harvest. And at every flagging day, we used a different color to specify the timing of symptom observation. And here is a snapshot of our peanut field with tons of uh, um, different colorful flags put out at the end of the season in 2019. During the growing season, we monitored uh, thrips abundance above peanut canopy using yellow sticky cards. We also recorded TSWV incidence over time and the position of all the symptomatic plants we flagged to assess TSWV distribution. We measured TSWV uh, symptom severity at the time when symptoms first observed 
and also before harvest. To assess yield reduction by the PSWV, we compare the yield between infected and non-infected plants. Statistical analysis were done in SAS, and we use SADI for spatial analysis, and I will talk more about it later in the presentation. So moving on to the results. First, we have thrips abundance. We found that only one thrips peak in the early season at, early, at around 21 to 49 days after planting, which varies uh, slightly with trials. But for all trials, thrips numbers remain low after the peak in the early season. For temporal spread, we observed that TSWV infection progressed throughout the season and when we fit the accumulated TSWV incidence over time to temporal spread models, we found that when the final incidence was higher than 50% when we observed in 2019, uh, the best model fit was the Gompers model. And this model suggested that the epidemic was polycyclic that involves a lot of secondary spread. On the other hand, when the final incidence was lower than 50% as many cases in 2020, the best model fit was the monomolecular model. And this model suggested that the epidemic was monocyclic with limited uh, secondary spread. In addition, we found that uh, the incidence increased two to five folds from 63 to 119 days after planting in both years, which was highly likely uh, caused by secondary spread as we only found one thrips peak in the early season. And in general, temporal spread was not different between cultivars except for this trial presented on the left here, where the final incidence was higher in Georgia Green than Georgia O6G. For spatial spread, we use uh, spatial analysis by distant indices, SADI, to analyze TSWV spatial patterns. So distance to regularity is the central concept of SADI, which is defined as the number of moves required for count in sampling units to produce regular distribution in the area. Um, the major output is the index of aggregation, I sub A. And aggregation is determined when the index is significantly greater than one. So TSWV distribution at each sampling date was, uh, was analyzed. And we found that uh, aggregation, we found aggregation about 10% of the time in 2019 and 40% of the time in 2020. In general, TSWV was randomly distributed in the early season and aggregation was often found in mid to late season. These results uh, support the occurrence of sec secondary spread causing aggregation of TSWV in the mid to late season. And no difference uh, in TSWV distribution was found between cultivars. So here we have two sets of TSWV uh, spatial patterns over time with a corresponding index of aggregation and temporal TSWV progression. The green, and red air, uh, area are clusters of low and high TSWV incidence, respectively. Epidemic, em, epidemic A in the upper panel had a final incidence of 68%, but there's no aggregation found based on the indices. While the epidemic B in the lower panel had a final incidence of 26%, and aggregation was found from 63 to 119 days after planting. Taking a closer look, we found that uh, in the early season, TSWV infection caused by primary spread were more in numbers and more evenly distributed in ep epidemic A than epidemic B. And this might be a reason why we did not find any aggregation later in the season in epidemic A as the in incidence incre uh, significantly increased because the virus was basically everywhere. On the other hand, TSWV appeared in only a little parts of the field in the early season here in epidemic B, and the secondary spread of the virus was apparent as the hotspot of TSWV expanded over time, um, which uh, led to aggregation. TSWV symptom severity has been found to be affected by timing of symptom uh, observation. 
for both first and final ratings, um, more severe symptoms were found in plants when they expressed symptoms earlier in the season. And this phenomenon was consistent between cultivars. Looking at the yield uh, reduction by TSWV infection, we found a lower yield in plants expressing symptoms um, early in the season. And when we compare the, uh, when we, when compared with non-infected plants, significant yield, low, uh, significant yield reduction was found in plants showing symptoms before 77 days after planting in this trial presented here. However, the cutoff range for a significant yield reduction was 63 to 91 days after planting, depending on the trials and cultivars. On average, TSWV infection reduced about 50% of peanut yield regardless of the timing of symptom observation. But when we used 77 days after planting to divide growing season, the average yield reduction in early season infection was up to 80%, whereas in the late season infection was only 25%. However, yield in late season infection could also be up to uh, reduced up to 53%. Although TSWV spread uh, did not seem to vary between the two cultivars, uh, yield reduction was lower in Georgia O6G than Georgia Green. And Georgia Green is the more susceptible cultivar between the two. So in summary, only one peak thrips was found in the early season, and those thrips were likely responsible for TSWV infection be before mid-season. Um, based on temporal TSWV spread models, occurrence of secondary spread was supported when the final incidence was greater than 50%, but not when the incidence was lower than 50%. Um, however, I wanted to point out an, an important point here that when picking the best model fit, the coefficient of determination for the gumpers and monomolecular models in many cases are pretty close to each other. Secondary spread in mid to late season was supported by aggregation observed in spatial patterns with tremendous increase of TSWV infection with both high and low overall incidence. And early season infection had more severe symptoms leading to enormous yield loss, which was three to four times higher than yield loss in late season infection. Overall, our results suggested that uh, secondary spread was an important driver for mid to late season infection, while early season infection accounted for most of the yield loss. To improve TSWV management, future studies should focus on developing tactics that could reduce secondary spread in addition to reducing primary spread. Um, with that, I would like to thank all the hardworking people who had helped me with this big project along the way, and also the funding sources for their support. Thank you for your attention. And I'll take any question you, if you may have now. Thank you, Ben Chu. We've got uh, a question right now. Okay. Um, this is from Dr. Soraya Bertioli. Did you expect the disease being both polycyclic in 2019 and monocyclic in 2020 and the different years. How do you explain this difference? Um, thank you for the question. So based on the temporal model fit, we did find that it's most likely polycyclic in 2019, but monocyclic in 2020. Uh, but uh, there was a little note that I put uh, in the discussion there where that uh, we found that the coefficient of depermeation when picking those uh, models, it's very close to each other. So there's that, that being said, this uh, model uh, selection for temporal spread, it could be debatable because they, they're really close. Maybe they both fit the model. And uh, what we believe is that, uh, we believe that the polycyclic uh, epidemic happened in both years, but but uh, just in the case in 2020, when the overall incidence was lower, somehow the temporal uh, model fitting wasn't picked that up, um, just like by comparing the model we have. So um, yeah, thanks for the question. This one comes from uh, Dr. David Langston. 
was the peanut growth in the hot spots similar to growth in the areas of lower disease incidence? And I assume he means early season growth, not later in the season. But uh, was peanut growth in those hot spots? Was there a difference in the way the peanuts were growing, which might explain why there was more spotted wilt there? Um, so I think the okay. So thank you for the question. Uh, first of all, um, um, I think the hot spot definitely you'll see they clustered together, and um, so our argument is that there might be more opportunities for infield uh, thrips population to spread the disease from that hotspot. And in terms of growing uh, of the plants, um, I think in general, it's very obvious that there's like a lot of incidents in that area and, and it's kind of spreading out. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I answer your question, but <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you, Pinchu. And now on to our next presentation. Thank you. Uh, 